Hey guys, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Seminari. You know, when you think of wine, and we're out in Long Island now, now Long Island wines have really paved the road, and I'm talking about the last 20 years. Uh, some of the most notable wines are up there right at the top of the list with world wine ratings. I'm here at a place called Pindar. If you've never heard of it, which you probably had, it is the most unbelievable vineyard serving up probably my favorite wines. We're gonna go inside and meet Pindar. He's the owner. It's a family-ran place, but man, they got it going on. We're gonna taste a few wines. We're gonna to tour the Bower Room, the stainless steel room. We're gonna have a little bit of love here on over 300 acres of everything that you can think of from farm, country, vineyard making, my friends. And we are about to meet Pindar, whose family put it together for over 40 years. Pindar, how are you? Chef Joe, welcome. Good to see Great you. Good to see you. Well, there's no secret here. This is definitely my favorite vineyard on Long Island. And, and you have, you do basically what a chef does, and that's really to formulate the craft and make it better and better and better. And if I understand, we're gonna be tasting some wines here, doing a tour today, but tell me a little bit about the, your family. Your dad started it, everything. If you can, just give me, give me a little rundown. People at home might not know about it. Absolutely, you're standing at the oldest family-owned winery on Long Island. The winery is celebrating 40 years. Uh, this is our 40th anniversary. The winery was uh, started in 78 by my father, Dr. Damianos, who's a doctor in Stony Brook. Always thought that Long Island would be a great place to grow grapes. Um, started with a small vineyard in 30 acres where we're standing today, uh, and then it grew from there. Um, now we, we produce over 50,000 cases of wine. Uh, we make 23 different varieties, from uh, champagnes all the way to dessert wines and everything in between and uh, we're glad to have you today. Excellent, well look, uh, thanks for the invitation. I can't wait to get started uh, trying some of the wines. We're also gonna be featuring a bunch of wines on the next uh, 12 episodes of Taste This TV coming up, where I'll be pairing these wines, not only in both cooking, but drinking them just as they are. So uh, why don't we get started with the tasting? I'd love to have you. All right, Absolutely. let's go. Okay, so I'm here with Pindar, my friend. You know, always a pleasure here. So we are gonna get ready to taste probably what? About like maybe six of the ones that uh, that are really popular here, you'd say? Yes, I got uh, three, uh, two whites and a sparkling wine, as well as uh, two, red, two red wines. All right, great. So what's the first one uh, that we're gonna be trying? Uh, we're gonna try the Viognier. This is uh, a standalone variety that we make. This wow. is the 2019. No, this is uh, stainless steel fermented. Really nice. crisp, dry. Nice. Um, now, do you do a lot of stainless steel and, and oak? Yes, or? we make a, a few wines that have uh, barrel aging on it, white wines, or sunflower chardonnay, and then we do a fair amount of stainless steel uh, fermented wines. Nice. All right, this is the Vignette first. Cheers. <laughs> wow, that is good. Crisp, dry. That is really good. A lot of citrus. Really, a lot of citrus is what I was going to tell Yeah, you definitely taste it. Very fruity. Something like this, I think, would go great with the uh, with the brie. Absolutely. Why don't we try a piece of the brie here? Good choice of cheese, by the way. Thank you. Mmm. Perfect. 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 Absolutely. Real and nice citrus flavor goes good with the brie because the brie is so creamy and a high fat content really goes and cuts well with this one. Now, going down to the second one. Absolutely. Thank you. This is a white blend that we came out with uh, last year in honor of my dad who passed nice. away four years ago. Um, and I should production. mention that we had his dad on the show. I was trying to find the footage yeah. on there, but this has got to be, and I'm talking maybe 20 years ago, but uh, glad to be here again in his memory, of course. 
So this is the Dr. Dan's collection. This is a white blend. This is a blend of Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Viognier, and the Birch Tremere. Really? Really nice. Stainless steel. First year we've made it. Just a little bit of everything. I mean, in your opinion, do you like the stainless steel as opposed to the oak? What, what's, what's your love on that? It really depends on, on what kind of wines you really like. We make Sunflower Chardonnay that has the barrel aging. Back in the 80s, early 90s, it was very oaky. That was what people were drinking. People's tastes have changed more to a stainless steel Chardonnay, but they still like a little bit of oak. Yeah. Uh, not that oak bond that you used to get, but it's right, just got right. a little bit of... Uh, Nothing overpowering. Yeah, oak aging, just to give it a little bit of that vanilla and uh, to toastiness flavor, but not nice. overbearing. All right, and this is the white blend. White Interesting blend. blend at that. Ooh, yeah, another really nice one. I love, ooh, this would go yeah. great with fish. Absolutely. Oh, this is a white flaky fish one, Mike. Now, when people say it's got legs to it, what what are they clarifying that, what that means really a little bit? Seeing, if you tip the glass over like that, you see how the, the, the wine slides down the glass? Right. That's really the legs of the wine. And what does that indicate? Right. I guess this fullness and uh, uh, of the wine, and more in red wines, you, you know, the aging process right. brings that that uh, that uh, more tannins and a little bit more richer wines. <sighs> but in white wines too, it has nice legs. That's the wine dripping down from yep. the side of the glass. I did the nose on this one is absolutely. That's the Gewürztraminer in it. It's a German variety. It means spicy. Beautiful. Wow. With this one, I would definitely go with the goat cheese. I think the goat cheese is a winner. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Wow. Just enough tanginess. Yeah. The wine perfect. And the cheese. Absolutely perfect. I gotta say, I'm, this one is a taste bud explosion right here. This is the 2019 Pindar White Blend with um, garlic and herb goat cheese is an absolutely perfect pair. I thought the brie was good, this is amazing. And for your viewers, this one is a limited production wine. You can buy it on, online or at the winery uh, in Peconic. And what, is, what is the website? Uh, www.pindar.net. Pindar.net, okay, good. What do we got for the next one? This, this is so far the number one. I'm gonna change it up before we go into reds. I'm gonna do the, uh, the sparkling. This is 100% nice. Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Nice, dry, crisp. Great for uh, cheese platter before dinner. Great with oysters as well. Great. Thank you, how are you doing? We do it all by hand. Uh, all by hand. We riddle by hand, disgorge it by hand. So it's all 100% method champenois. Wow. That's where you get the small crisp bubbles and you get beautifulness. All these little tiny bubbles, mm -hmm. all done by hand. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Perfect amount of, of pop on there. Yeah, good acidity. Really, really good with really uh, good. beginning of dinner. Definitely gonna go with a strawberry through, on this one. Yeah, even carrying it through dinner. And like I said, you can have it with oysters and any kind of seafood too. Just mm -hmm. has enough bubbling this on your tongue. Oh wow, try a strawberry with that. That is, a, a champagne of this quality really brings out the, the natural sugars in the fruit. And, and it just a, a ripe strawberry just is perfect on the palate. Yeah, I wouldn't even go with any cheese on that one. Really guys. Good call with the fruit. Absolutely. Sparkling wines through dinner. You don't have to uh, just have it before dinner. You can really carry it through to the whole meal. You know, I've always said sparkling wines are such an art, right? Because, it, I mean, a lot of times you would think, how could you screw up sparkling? But you can. I mean, and, and this has got the perfect amount of sizzle and just the, the just your feel on the palate is really, really smooth on this one. Especially when you do the secondary fermentation in the bottle and you age it in, in sparkling. Mm. Once it's on the secondary fermentation, you can age uh, for a very long time, so wow. it just gets better as as, uh, as the wine ages. Incredible, incredible. What do we got next? Going on to reds? Absolutely. 
Now, what would you say your would you, would you say that you prefer the red production over the over the over the white? Uh, it's like picking your favorite chocolate. Yeah, that's I, what I like it is, them. right? I like all the wines. All dependent on what, what you're going to have it with it. Exactly. I think Long Island wines go very well with food. We are on an island surrounded by water. Yep. We get the beautiful fish and scallops and all kinds of uh, seafood here. And, and then you can carry it through with uh, with the red wines having a beautiful steak or venison. Or, that's right. Um, so I think the wines, Long Island wines especially, go very well with, with food. And you can sip yeah. them too on your deck, but I like to have it with a nice meal. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So the first one out the gate is... This is Pythagoras. This is our baby Bordeaux blend. This has Merlot, Cabernet, Cab Franc, Petit mm. Verdot, and Malbec. It's a non-vintage. Gives the winemaker some flexibility um, to mix in the blends mm -hmm. over the years. So this probably has a little bit of 17 and 18 wines. Wow. And then we'll make a standalone uh, Bordeaux uh, blend called Mythology. The next vintage will be in 2019, and that's a standalone vintage wine. But Very this nice. gives the winemaker a lot of flexibility to uh, play around with the barrels and the blend every year. Very really nice. nice. I think it's a little heavy on Cab Franc, which is grown very well on Long Island. Now, is this a dry wine? Dry wine, yeah, absolutely. Smell it. This is perfect mm -hmm. for steaks, yeah. easy drinking, good with burgers in that summertime of Long Island, especially as you get into the fall. Yeah, just nice. easy drinking. Yeah. Exactly, easy yeah. drink. It's not overpowering. A lot of times this can be a very heavy wine. Um, this is, I would definitely say that, you know, dipping into the seafood, something like a scallop, this would be perfect with. Absolutely. Actually, you know what, even with this, I would go the sharp cheddar. sharpness of the cheddar on the tongue. So far, my man, you're at the top of the list with every one of them. And you know, I, I, I prefer wines that complement the food, that don't overpower it. And I think far too many times, you get a wine and it, you know, it's got so much hype and then you pair it up to the, to, the, to the food and it's just way overpowering. These are very simple flavors and, and very subtle. And, and it gets, it stays with you too. It doesn't just hit you on one side of the palate, it just, Really nice blend. What'd you think of the cheese on that one? Excellent, especially that sharp cheddar. Really gives you the ting on the, really? On the tongue. Really, really nice. does. What do you this got next? Great. Not, not, not uh, Long Island wines don't have a real high alcohol content, so that's why they're so great. What year was this one? This is a non-vintage, so this will give the winemaker the ability to use a little bit of 17, a little bit of 18. Got it. He'll pick five barrels here, six barrels from there. Hell of a job on that one. Yeah. Really nice. This is where a winemaker really uh, earns his check, especially when you have to make the blend and, and uh, pick the certain barrels to make the final blend. Now, how involved do you get in the winemaking process? I'm sure very involved, right? Uh, yeah, the whole family. We have a, we have a great winemaker, <laughs> Eric Bilka. He's been with us for three years. Nice. Um, about my age, you know, in his 40s. Has a very, has a very good palate. And uh, we'll try through the wines. Uh, after harvest, we're, we're through the process now, so we'll start, uh, after the wines are fermented, we'll start trying through them and making the final blends. Very nice. He'll bring what he wants to, to the wines, just like the white blend, and then we'll tweak it a little bit. So everybody's bringing something to the table to make Absolutely. it great. Absolutely. We'll just sit like, in a room yeah. and try through all the, the blends, and then uh, we'll try through them and get a consensus of what we think the customers are going to like and what, what we want to produce and put out to the public. Yeah, I think that's great, you know, definitely a nice pick on that one. Doing the Cabernet next? Yes, and this just was released this past weekend. So this oh, really? is the 2017, a great vintage we had in 17. Mm. All the vintage is good on Long Island. 17, I would say a little more exceptional. Mm. Uh, great growing season. Later in the season we had that wow. warm weather. Nice. So I think it, it rounds out the portfolio very nicely. Very nice. And Cabernet, uh, it's a great variety, good with all kinds of foods. Merlot has gotten a hit through the last couple of years with the movie and stuff like right, that. Right, the Cabernet right. is starting to... Uh, mm. Yeah, that's right. Nice Very nice. Flourish. And this is a little more full body than the Pythagoras. A little fruity. Yeah, standalone. You'll get that oak. That oak uh, I smell that oak. There. There's something about that smelling that oak, man, that really... We use French and American. 
so uh, you get a little bit of a blend. He even plays around with a little Hungarian oak. Oh, nice one. Yeah, this, is a, this is a this is a steak habits. wine right yeah, here. Absolutely. This is definitely steak wine. Probably a ribeye because you want a little bit of that fat in the meat. Uh, definitely would not pair this with a filet mignon, but man, this is on the money. T-bone, porterhouse. Wow, even braised short rib would be good on that. Yeah, I would leave this with a steak. This is totally a protein wine right there. Very good job on that one. What do we got next? Now this is the dessert wine, right? Yes, this is the, the port. But you have a multiple. Uh, you we do. We make two dessert wines as right. well. 100% uh, Gewürztraminer and uh, Late Harvest Riesling. Nice. So this is our Cabernet port. This is 2014. Nice. This is 100% Cab Franc. I am a big fan of cooking with ports. What can you tell me special about this one? We age them for at least five years before we release it, all in uh, oh. either American or French oak. I was just about to yeah. say, man, you could smell the oak a mile away on here. Wow. Now, is five years a typical? Uh... All dependent. Sometimes we'll do it uh, longer. Now, the 15s are still aging. Once this is uh, sold out, then we'll think about releasing the, the next vintage. Wine is such a special thing to, to be making, right? Because, I mean, you put so much of your life into it. I mean, how many times do you have to check this during the yeah, five years? Yeah. A few times, yeah, right? A few times, absolutely. <laughs> so it's, like, it's almost like yeah. what, keeping an eye on one of your kids. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that, uh, that things are... Now, do they, at, at some point, does it sit? Does it turn? Do you have to... What, what do you have to do special? In, in the five just, years. Because of the uh, high alcohol, because it's a port, it just ages. It in, just ages in the by barrel. itself. Yep, in the barrel. And yes. uh, and you don't want a, a barrel that gives off a lot of oak or anything like that. So these are used Oh barrels. my God. Very nice, 100%. This is, this is, man. If you are if you have a sweet tooth like I do, this this is takes it to another level. Really smooth. The alcohol is super smooth. smooth. And melded really nicely into the, into the wine. This is a winner. This is it right here. Wow. And that's the 14, really great. Great for after dinner. Yeah. This, this would go good with the Havarti, no doubt about it. Yeah, I could stay here all night, be drinking nice this. To, uh, try wines with a chef that can navigate you through the cheeses. Maybe. You know, I have, uh, I probably know all the major cheese I'm, cheese manufacturers in Wisconsin. So uh -huh. I've been so, I spent so many time over there with, with different cheeses and stuff like that. Especially Roth Casa, if you know that company, they make some incredible stuff. But really, your wines need to be up there, seriously, because they, they are, this is amazing right here. I can almost smell the hard work. I mean, that's what I look for in a wine. You know, when I'm sitting there and I'm smelling, I'm not, oh, it's got a nice smell. Like, I could smell what went into this, you know? And, and the softness of it. It's all in the aging. Beautiful. The longer it stays, the, the, the better, better it gets. Wow. Okay, so we got the first tasting here. Why don't we head over to the actual uh, room where we're gonna, what do you call that? Just That's the barrel the, uh, room? Yeah, but we'll go to the barrel room and the, uh, and the tank room where we ferment all the wines. You're at a good point. Most of the uh, 2020 wines are in tank fermenting. Good. And uh, absolutely. Sounds good, course. let's head over. Okay, so we're here with Pindar, and this is one of the incredible uh, barrel rooms, right? The stainless steel barrel. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, we invited John Formica, uh, actor, on the set here. Since he's a wine connoisseur, we, we figured, hey, if it, if it passes John's palate, it's ready. But this is an incredible uh, room here. And just right after this, we're going to take a walk to the oak side. Uh, and, and check out what we got in there. But Pindar, what do we have in this one? This is the 2020 uh, uh, 20, 20 Viognier. Uh, we tried the 19, so I figured why don't we try the, the 20 um, before it's in bottle. Um, this is stainless steel fermented. It's gone through its fermentation process. It's dry, um, and this will be bottled in, in uh, April. 
Wow. Wow, that, that is just, that's godly coming out of that thing. Oh boy, that looks... Yeah, it's already uh, going through its fermentation process. And so, so besides the winemakers and yourself, are we the first ones to taste this? Absolutely, this is the first. Oh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> Salud. Salud. Oh, man. Man, is nice. that clean. Nice legs. What do you think, John? Beautiful nose. Great. Ah, oh, really, wow. You really see that. You guys that did yourself. A privilege. Yeah. This is great. You guys that did yourself with this one. And this, we actually tried the 19, 2019, and this is the 2020. Yeah, so you get right? to see that comparison after a year. Um, and this will be in the bottle probably in April. In awesome. April, yeah. So now we're here in the oak room, yes. and you could smell, right? The minute we come in here, you smell this incredible, like, barrel smell. I'm in heaven here. Yeah. So what does it take to, to put all this together? I mean, a lot of... This is where the labor, this is where winemaking really shows its uh, true self mm -hmm. um, when you're age wines. Because um, there's a lot of work that involved in, in aging oak. Um, because it's porous, you lose wine to the air, so there's a constant process of popping the barrels and making sure that uh, there's no headspace because wow. it can cause uh, air to get into the barrel and cause it to turn to, to vinegar. Um, so there is, it's a process. One thing uh, in the barrel room, you don't leave just the barrels and close the door. It's a constant uh, looking through to make sure bungs don't fall off or, you know. Yeah, um, right, that could happen. Absolutely, and that telltale uh, thing of uh, one barrel can spoil the batch or one apple can spoil the bunch the same thing in barrels. Uh, you don't want to, we'll try through all the barrels before we make the master blends because if there was a barrel that's off or got some air, we don't want to mix that into the tank. It can oxidize the whole entire batch. And this is where the craft making comes in, really. Absolutely. This is where the winemaker uh, really can do his magic so and, and his talent. Can, can you give us a sneak peek? What's your favorite barrel coming up? Give, it, give uh, us your favorite pick. I think the 19 across the board, all the wines are excellent. Um, our mythology will be back. We're sold out of it now. That's our high-end red. Nice. Um, that's the blend of uh, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Cabernet, Cab Franc, and Petit Verdot. Excellent year for mythology. We only make it in certain years that it's exceptional. Wow. Um, and when that wine comes out, that will be our top red, um, and it will blow your socks off. And that's the 19th. Yes, the 19th. Nice. Pindar, thank you for thank having you, me. Chef. Unbelievable it's place. Been a check them out. Check out the website, John. Thank you so much for having us here thank as you. well. And, uh, it's been a pleasure. Just nice uh, to always, you. always appreciate your palate. Well, you know, you have some incredible wines that are out there on the market. Let's face it, up and down the hill all across the world. But I'm talking for Long Island. This is the premier stuff that they're producing here. Take a look at their website. Come down, have a little bit of a taste. And if you're lucky, Pindar will be here to maybe talk to you about the wine yourself. Remember, there are no rules in cooking, my friends. Taste this.